couple of uh, practical things since you know we do have an FDA approval obviously the Novartis approval of, of, of Tisogen like Lucelle came first um, from I think from your perspective Michael and, and David's perspective I'd love to hear what you think and I know obviously you, you understand the label mm -hmm. which patients right now should be referred to in the pediatric population the young adult population given this is where the label indication is for therapy exactly or, or for consultation so so the label very specifically says um, refractory or multiply relapsed to ALL um, that's exactly what we want to see. If patients do not go into remission with initial induction therapy, we need to see them. If patients um, relapse, especially if they relapse multiple times, they very much should uh, receive this therapy. If patients relapse after transplant, it's really the, one of the only salvage therapies. Second transplant works in very rare cases, um, but uh, treating these patients with tesogen leucocell um, uh, after a relapse, after transplant, can cure most of them. Um, so I think it's a very, uh, th those are, are right on target. Um, for the future, you know, we, we, we're trying to, to go even earlier and, and identify very high risk patients. But for now, uh, and for the current label, I think those are the patients we're looking for. David, would you add anything differently for the young adult patients, or uh, do you agree with what No, I certainly agree stated? with that. I think, uh, obviously, we're going to try to people want to try to move this up into the high risk population even you know potentially earlier i i think there's no other treatment that has shown this degree of activity ever in you know in the, in the treatment of relapse refractory disease there are other treatments out there blenitumumab ionituzumab ozogamycin but you know if, even if you look at those progression free survival curves there most most patients relapse within a year and so i think this should be moved up um, in, in the scheme of things. And we need to get it, as, as we were talking about earlier, into the adult population. Yeah, certainly the standard therapies are much less successful in adults than in children. So I think there, there's, there's much larger unmet need yeah. among adult patients with ALO. Mm -hmm. So one, uh, again, practical thing, since again, many of the, the individuals who are, gonna be, who are trying to get this information may not know this, roughly how many sites uh, at commercial launch uh, for Novartis or for Kite will be uh, doing this therapy, at least in the, in the in the very short term. Well, I think that it's. I I think they're both companies are quite wise in their rolling this out slowly into centers that have expertise. I mean, I, I think that's critically important. And of course, I'm one of those centers, so <clears throat> maybe that's the, uh, I'm, I'm speaking wrongly here. But I think we really need to have experience with managing cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity. To, in, at least initially, as we develop the algorithms, uh, how to prevent or even preempt some of these toxicities, then I think it could be rolled out. So, uh, so right now it's just a matter of uh, getting the, referring patients early enough to those, to those sites to be able to be treated, uh, obviously having capacity. Um, it, right now I think most center, or, uh, both companies seem to have capacity, but we're, we're really early in the game here. And really at, at launch, we're talking about less than a couple of dozen yeah, sites lost, for, yes. for yeah. each of these. On, so on the pediatric yeah. side, we, we uh, the initial, one of the ways that we facilitated doing this was to involve um, a, a large number of very experienced centers with the approval trial. Um, so we had 15 U.S. centers, a total of 25 international centers. Now in the U.S. Um, uh, for the commercial product, um, 33 centers, uh, 33 to 35 centers have been designated. 23 of them are active right now. Trying, you know, working very hard to try to cover areas of the country so that people, when they refer, don't have to refer in extreme distances. Um, but yeah, we, the, these centers need to gain expertise. Over time, more and more centers will be doing this, but it takes time, effort, and resources to figure out how to do this. And I would point out that the things are going to be very similar for Kite and and having, again, been, been part of some of these early studies, we know how difficult they are. We know the, the kinds of uh, toxicities that we discussed earlier and how, at least initially, I think that we all believe that, that this is something that should be done in highly specialized centers. And as we develop experience and, and as we disseminate that information academically and we learn more, obviously the, 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 the range of centers that will do this will broaden quickly. Yeah, I think time. it's also just important to remember that in a pediatric young adult ALL, that this is a small problem. I mean, it's a big problem for the patients who have relapsed refractory ALL, but number of patients per year is estimated at maybe 600, mm -hmm. you know, so it's very small. Contrast that with relapse to fuse large B-cell lymphoma where maybe 50% of people relapse and we're talking that will tens stress of the 20, system. tens that of 20, will test the capacity. Of patients. We, we were talking about this in yeah. a meeting yesterday where um, this is gonna be going to 100 centers rather than 30 centers and how difficult that is going to be to scale up. Um, we'll see this happening over the next few years, but it's gonna be a big challenge.